everyone, Jeremy from Daily Marketing here. I'm going through another video on our Facebook and Instagram ads epic. Um, today we are going to go through the placement options um, at the ad set level. And so, um, you know, a lot of people just use the automatic placements. And I think that when they use automatic placements, they think they're getting the news feed or whatever. Um, I want to kind of go through um, what happens when you actually edit the placements. And different campaigns have different um, placements that they're allowed in. I chose link click campaigns as far as I know link click is available in every um, kind of in every placement and so we're just going to run through these real quick explain what they are and then I'll kind of give you my take on what I've seen work in the past and what I've seen not so automatic like I said maximize budget Facebook will when you do automatic you're giving Facebook the latitude <coughs> to be able to optimize um, which placements um, it shows in order to um, basically in order to like use that as one of the things that the algorithm can optimize for you. Right. And so that's, that's super useful for some people. And I find that, and I do use it for a number of campaigns. Um, you know, that said, um, I also edit placements quite a bit as well. And, and the reason is that, you know, kind of with my experience as an advertiser, as I go in here, I often see certain places play form and certain not perform right and so i'm just going to kind of run through these like i said and explain you know what they are um but first um you know you can do asset customization right um well first is device type so you can do mobile or just desktop right so if you just do desktop it pulls a bunch if you do desktop and mobile right certain things make sense for certain placements um you know if you're Got maybe more of a B2B sale, something like that. You might want to consider doing just desktop. If you're doing like, you know, a mobile app, obviously you just want to do mobile, um, you know, those sort of things. So as we go through here, I want to start off by going through asset customization. Um, now, asset customization allows you to select, like it says, allows you to select images or videos for each placement with a single ad, within a single ad, right? Um, and what that means is if you have so like you can customize which image um or video goes in feed versus instant article whatever um and so you can select all placements and those only but only some of them actually support that so feeds supports it stories instagram feeds instagram stories audience network though with the native banner and interstitial reward videos um and then the messenger inbox right so we're gonna turn that off um, for now. I'm gonna switch back so I can turn that off. Um, so going through, so Facebook platform um, <coughs> feeds is what it sounds like. That is either the mobile or the desktop news feed that is when you log into facebook.com. Instant articles. Um, so Facebook has what is called um, Facebook instant articles, right? And that's people that embed um, kind of a piece of code into their website. It grabs blog articles and images and stuff like that. And then Facebook stores it on their server. So it loads even faster. And then the, the why Facebook would pay to do that and why Facebook would put support into that is because then they actually insert ads. They, they will do automatic breaks and insert ads. So as you can see, you know, kind of with, um, What's going on to the right of my cursor here, or my mouse? Um, you will, uh, you'll, you'll see. You know, kind of, you're going through the article, and then boom, ad right in the middle of it. In stream videos, um, those are not. That's actually not available with the traffic objective, right? Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's in stream videos. <laughs> so it's what it is is mid um, of longer videos in the middle of playing them, it will start to play an ad, right? And so think just classic TV commercial style placement. Um, you know, you're watching a show, there's an ad break, you go back to the show. Right-hand column, if you are on desktop, um, right-hand column is over on the right-hand side. They're tiny little ads, um, they have a lot less copy, um, the images are much smaller. Um, suggested video, so when people are scrolling through like the watch section on Facebook, um, and Facebook Watch, there's a lot of people using it, not everybody, but you can go through and just kind of scroll funny videos. I think it's their answer to YouTube, to be honest, but, well, that and Instagram TV, but um, you can go through, you can scroll videos, and then there will be a suggested, basically a promoted video, um, or promoted suggested video kind of in the middle of those videos. So 
Marketplace, a lot of people are using Marketplace, kind of like Craigslist, if you aren't familiar with Marketplace. Um, you know, this has been a really interesting one. So you can get ads placed inside of the actual Marketplace part. Um, I found these to be very effective. We'll get a little bit more into that later. And then stories, obviously, Facebook has stories just like Instagram does. These are ads that go into the middle of stories. Instagram feed, obviously it's the Instagram feed, Instagram stories, fairly self-explanatory. Audience network, now this is where it gets interesting. These are not, like these may or may not be things that Facebook owns, but this is Facebook's kind of like third party network where, you know, it's apps, mobile apps and things like that. Um, you know, other websites, that sort of thing. Native banner and interstitial. These are native ads, right? Um, you know, in-stream videos, again, in-stream, and then rewarded videos. Um, so rewarded videos are like you're playing a game, you know, and you do the, you know, watch the video for 30 seconds to get five extra points or whatever, right? Um, yeah, and so then finally, Messenger, we've got um, Inbox. So when people are scrolling through their inbox, there's, you know, in between their friends, there's um, ad stories in messenger obviously and then sponsored messages um really interesting sponsored messages um it, it just pops up as like an unread message from a friend but it's from your brand instead so um <coughs> going down here interesting things so i want to point out so mobile devices you can do feature phone ios or android right you can break those down a little bit you can only do it when people are connected to wi-fi this is useful if you're doing like a mobile app or something like that um, and you're, you know, really, or you have an asset that you're trying to take people to that is a little bit more, um, robust and you want a good load time anyway. So you can just do it just when people are connected to Wi-Fi. Other thing too, is that you can do, um, exclude categories. So you can exclude mature and then dating, gambling, things like that. Tragedy and conflict, debatable social issues, and then block list. You can actually, um, at your at the business setting like level, um, you can apply a list of specific apps that you've gotten traffic from um, that you just don't want. So you can block list those forever. So if you know if you get like a lot of clicks from a certain app, um, none of it converts, and you don't like the performance of it, just block list it. Right. So this happens um, just for context. That is kind of the normal way that big advertisers do their. Um, do their uh, like display and video ads across the net, right? And so they'll buy inventory from an ad network and then they will turn around and just slowly pare back and block list the inventory that they don't want, right? Um, it's not the greatest practice, but I mean, that's kind of more of a state of the industry rant than practical Facebook video one. I'll save that for another time. So as we go up here, you know, here's the things that I see work. Um, Number one, only use when connected with Wi-Fi, right? That's super useful if you have a robust um, sort of like site or you're trying to get somebody to download mobile apps or whatever. Um, I just have a lot better success with that just because load time is so important when it comes to acquisition. Um, other things I'm seeing working. Um, Facebook feeds, Instagram feeds, those are my two gold standards. Those are the ones that I see working best um, when it comes to kind of general purpose. If I'm selling a product, I'll include Marketplace in there by default. Marketplace is a very good placement for me. Um, if I'm doing video, like I won't bother doing stories on any of them. And obviously <clears throat> you can't if you're um, doing a, si a single image versus a video for in-stream video, rewarded videos, what have you. Um, you know, that said, I, a lot of these don't, I don't get a lot of value out of right column. I don't typically do instant articles are hit or miss for me. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Um, Facebook stories. I don't really use Instagram stories are good, but you need to do specific creative just for Instagram stories. Otherwise they aren't going to work great. Um, audience network. I usually just take all of audience network out. I haven't gotten great results with it. Some people swear by it. Um, in fact, I've talked to people, um, that run just pure audience network campaigns. They get a lot of success, more power to them. Um, you know, it hasn't worked for me. And then Messenger, I will do Messenger, 
but I will only do messenger if I have a bot set up for a client, right? Um, or I'm doing something specifically where I'm trying to get somebody to engage with me and send me some messages, do some qualifying information, things like that. So um, if I have a bot and I have like a simple flow set up there, I will do messenger. Otherwise I will not do messenger for a single image ad or a carousel, or I don't even know if carousel would work in the um, messenger to be honest, but I'd have to look into that. But um, I will not do messenger placements typically for my regular products. So if you are e-commerce, if you are a mobile app, if you are anything B2C, my advice is do feed in Facebook feeds, Facebook marketplace, Instagram feeds, and then break out and do another ad set that is just Instagram stories, but do specific creative for Instagram stories. If you are <clears throat> B2B, um, I would consider doing you know, Messenger maybe with a chat bot, Facebook feeds, Instagram feeds, maybe Instagram stories again, maybe marketplace depending on what the B2B product is. Um, typically, you know, and then instant articles is worth testing on all of those. Now, finally, if I am running a retargeting campaign, that is if I am running a campaign where the goal is you know, just people that have already been to my site, maybe added to cart, I'm trying to get them to purchase. I'll just do automatic placements. I'll do everything that it'll give me, right? Because at that point, it's just overwhelming force, just trying to get people to kind of tip the scales and go over. So hopefully that's useful to everybody. Um, you know, like I said, there's a lot of value in kind of taking a little bit of extra time and being um, thoughtful with your placements on Facebook and Instagram. So hopefully everybody got a lot of value. Thank you so much for your time and happy marketing, everyone.